Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Why I Didn't. In this episode, we're covering neurosurgery. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. Now, this series is called Why I Didn't. I cover my personal experience with a specialty, particularly those that I was considering, like neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, and plastic surgery. I ended up going into plastics, but neurosurgery was high on the list. So I go over the specialty, my experiences, what I liked, what I didn't like, what biases I had, and why I did not choose the specialty. And then at the end of the video, I go over some considerations for you if you are choosing the specialty. So think of this as the opposite of So You Want To Be. So You Want To Be is on the Medical Insiders channel, very objective, whereas this is subjective. And I talked to multiple experts in the field. We have a very popular episode on So You Want To Be A Neurosurgeon. And we cover the whole specialty, the different you know fellowships you can do, how to get in, the pros, the cons, all that good stuff. So check out that video if you haven't already, link down below. And let me tell you about neurosurgery from my perspective because it was definitely high on my list. I majored in neuroscience in college at UCLA because the brain is just, it's the sexiest organ. It is so cool. It is like fascinating and mysterious and ultimately it's what makes us human. Being a surgeon and then operating on it seems super badass. I definitely had the same perspective on neurosurgery as just like the average lay person, right? Society at large thinks of neurosurgeons as badass, super smart, doing really meticulous stuff, doing, you know, being brainiacs, just like the pinnacle, right? When you think of the coolest, most hardcore badass doctors, you think of neurosurgeons, it's like neurosurgeons and rocket scientists. Those guys I was just gonna say it, this guy am I right? This guy You know, and then of course there's the rocket surgeons at the top. Most of those stereotypes are true-ish, not all of them, actually some of them I disagree with. So we'll get to that shortly. Now my first day of surgery, third year, I walk into the OR, still wearing my dress shoes because I hadn't gotten OR shoes yet, don't do that, it's not comfortable and it was a really, really, really cool case. It was an animated latissimus dorsi transfer. So essentially took the latissimus dorsi, your back muscle, and rotated it like this while keeping the nerve and the artery intact, and then reattached it here in the arm and created a bicep out of it so they could bend their arm. Really, really cool stuff. And I was like, okay, hold on. So there's a plastic surgeon here and then a neurosurgeon here. They're working on this case together. Which one of these guys does this kind of stuff more often because that's what I wanna do for the rest of my life. And turns out it was mostly plastic surgery, but the, the neurosurgeon was there for peripheral nerve stuff. So anyways, I digress. During my third year rotations, I had exposure to neurosurgery, plastic surgery, orthopedic surgery, and then also general surgery because it's required. But out of the ones that I could choose, those are the three specialties that I was considering most seriously. Now my neurosurgery experience was a lot of fun. So I think out of all the people, all the surgeons out there, I think neurosurgeons are the coolest, but again, that is just from my experience at UC San Diego where I was doing medical school. They were hilarious, they were just cool. They were like, I felt like these were the people that I wanted to spend the most time with. You know, more so than any other type of surgeon actually. But when choosing a specialty, you can't focus too much on the personality types because there are gonna be some tendencies like neurosurgeons at UCSD will probably be more similar to neurosurgeons at on the East Coast compared to like a pediatrician at UC San Diego. For example, when you are deciding on a specialty, you want to separate out the personalities, which is a huge influence on how you feel about a specialty. I loved my neurosurgery rotation because I was hanging out with really cool people. It was always really fun. They're cracking jokes. It was just a blast. Felt like my kind of people. But the really impressive thing about neurosurgeons, what makes them unique from most other surgeons, not all other surgeons, is that they are badass in terms of both surgery and medical management. Through med school, you learn a lot of stuff, right? And then you go to residency, you start specializing, and you forget a lot about medical management. In fact, there's a pretty, uh, pretty strong stereotype that orthopedic surgeons are like the worst at this. <laughs> that they, I've heard stories about like orthopedic surgeons forgetting what a hemoglobin A1C is, and like, I mean, I doubt they actually ever forget that, right? But the stereotype is just that orthopedic surgeons don't do any medical management, and that they've forgotten a lot of this stuff because they just operate. They're just like, people make fun of orthopedic surgeons for being like cavemen and just be like, ooh, you know, hammer and whatever, which is, because um, it's a cruder type of surgery, but obviously you need to be really smart to go into ortho because it's super competitive. But again, the cool thing about neurosurgery is that they handle a lot of patients in the ICU. Think about it, what kind of patients need brain surgery? People that need orthopedics or plastics or a lot of other types of surgery are usually more stable 
Whereas neurosurgeons, they're working on the sickest of the sickest patients. I mean, so are some cardiothoracic surgeons and stuff, but neurosurgeons are often dealing with both medical and surgical management. And I think that is pretty badass. That's very unique to surgery. And in my perspective, that's definitely a plus. That was like a point for neurosurgery. But if you're the kind of person that doesn't like that, you just want to operate, you want to not handle so much complex medical management, ventilator settings, pressors, stuff like that, then maybe that's a negative for you. Maybe that's minus a point. Aww. So those were two things I really liked. The people, the fact that they still retain a lot of their medical management skills, which I think is badass. And I think the nervous system is just the coolest, most badass organ system. It's just the most fascinating. So those are the three things that I really, that really drew me to neurosurgery. The things that surprised me about the specialty are things that will probably surprise you too, based on, I mean, assuming that you, you are like the average person and have the average understanding of what neurosurgery is. So first, this one's kind of, I guess, more, more obvious. The patients you operate on tend to have poor outcomes because again, think about it. What kind of patients need brain surgery? It's, you're gonna have darker outcomes. You're not gonna have someone like going home happy and be like, yay, like life is great. It's usually pretty dark, not always. And sometimes you're saving people's lives. But for example, let's say you have a patient that has GBM, glioblastoma multiforme, not a very good prognosis, pretty dark disease. And maybe it's not cancer, maybe it's something else. I remember there was this one patient, I'm not gonna get into too many details for obvious reasons. The patient was moving their finger, you know, we're just talking shop, but the, the parents overheard us saying that, oh, the patient is showing some improvement. It was so heart-wrenching that they were being so hopeful, like, oh, you know, their, their child is going to get better and like things are gonna go great because right now they're kind of, they're like in a vegetative state. And then we had to tell them like, oh no, sorry, you know, the, the finger move, like the, your child is not, like, it was, it was just dark. To, to say that you're not, we need to keep your expectations in check. Your child is not walking home, you know? The fact that they were responding to pain when we pinched them was like, is a good sign, but you know, it's still very far from being, having a normal life. And that's something that surprised me. That actually weighed on me a lot more than I expected. I think it's one of those things that you have to actually see to understand what it means to you and if it will have an impact, because for some people, they find a lot of meaning and that doesn't really bother them as much. They may actually find more value from it to be like, hey, I'm helping the people that need it the most. It was one of those instances where I was like, wow, this is, if I had to do this a day in, day out, it would wear on me. You know, having patients that oftentimes have very poor outcomes, that would just, it'd be dark. And um, that, was, that was a big turnoff for me. The other thing that surprised me and will probably surprise you and that I did not like is neurosurgery is much more crude than you would expect. There's gonna be some people who are like, oh, what about like this one you know, fellowship within neurosurgery? Okay, sure. Yeah, there's like, within neurosurgery, there's a lot of different types, but when you're talking about a specialty, there's like the bread and butter, right? And the things you're doing most of the time. Like for example, plastic surgery is extremely meticulous, extremely detail oriented, extremely like, they care about the finest little details. And then you look at burn, which is as a fellowship or you can do after plastic surgery, and that's not nearly as precise, right? So there's always exceptions. So within neurosurgery, are there some exceptions? Absolutely. However, overall the field is way more crude than you would expect. If orthopedic surgery is on one end of the spectrum, which is a little bit more just like, you know, macro and bones and like angles and leverage and stuff like that. And like, the, I mean, the unfair stereotype is like, it's cavemen with like hammers, which, you know, obviously these are really smart people, but just like the joke that amongst medical professionals, that's one of the spectrum. And think of like plastic surgery as the other end of the spectrum being like super meticulous, like caring about the closure angles and like scar minimization and stuff. And whereas orthopods may just be like, all right, staple, staple, staple. And like, you know, it doesn't have to look pretty. Neurosurgery is not really over here. It's really not very close to plastic surgery at all. And that was something that really surprised me. I remember seeing, you know, like um, suctioning out some tumors and, and feeling like it was such an imprecise and very just kind of like a, mm, looks good, yeah, suck, suck, suck. Like, it wasn't what I expected neurosurgery to be. And I actually talked to one of the residents and one of the attendings about like, hey, like what's the kind of the spectrum in terms of what is more, um, I don't think I use the word crude because I don't want to come across as like, because crude may have a negative connotation to some people. But essentially I was asking without, without using this exact wording, like, hey, is neurosurgery always this crude or is it more precise and meticulous in other ways? And both the resident and the attending, they were like, oh no, neurosurgery is much more crude than people expect. It's not nearly as precise and meticulous as something like plastic surgery, for example. This is totally the part where a lot of people are gonna protest in the comments like, neurosurgery is so precise, how dare you? Like, 
Again, I'm talking about my experience and when I spoke to the residents and the attendings that I was rotating with and what I saw during my few weeks. So have I seen all of neurosurgery? Obviously not. And if you watch my So You Want To Be episode, I do talk about some fellowships where things are more precise, but overall as a specialty, it's not nearly as precise and meticulous as something like plastic surgery. Okay, so for those who are now considering neurosurgery themselves, a couple things I wanna say. So first of all, obviously consider these multiple factors I touched on. The personalities, I think the personalities of neurosurgery are really cool. Um, think about the how dark a lot of the outcomes are gonna be for your patients. Obviously the organ system, super cool. You're gonna have to know a lot of medical management. There's also some other things. One of them being that neurosurgeons work some of the craziest hours. They're some of the hardest working people in all of medicine. At my institution, they would say that the neurosurgeons are the first to enter the hospital and the last ones to leave because they just, I mean, workaholism to the max. And kudos to them, a lot of respect to them because a lot of people can't do that, right? The, the level of like work ethic and discipline you need to have to go into neurosurgery is second to none, it really is. The other thing that's interesting is how people always expect neurosurgeons and like cardiologists, I guess, to have the biggest God complex. I like some of the coolest people I know are neurosurgeons and, and are super humble actually. Um, the ones that do have the God complex, they actually rock it in like a joking way. So it's not it's not douchey, it's not off-putting, it's actually really hilarious. The other thing you should know if you are considering neurosurgery is that it has one of the longest training paths of any specialty in all of medicine, which makes sense because you're operating on the brain of all things. I mean, that's also probably why it's gonna be pretty immune from scope creep from mid-levels, you're not gonna have many PAs and NPs. I mean, actually, you never really know with the crazy things you see online these days. But hopefully you're not gonna see many PAs and NPs saying that they're qualified to do brain surgery after um, they're much shorter training. So, <laughs> damn, I just opened up a can of worms in the middle of this video. So I think neurosurgery residency is normally six years and then many of them have a seventh year for research. And of all the residencies, so there is an 80 hour work week restriction from the ACGME. There have been many neurosurgery programs and maybe more neurosurgery programs than any other specialty that have violated that and been on probation by the ACGME. So keep that in mind. You're gonna work a lot harder in neurosurgery than you are in most other surgical specialties, more so than in plastics, more so than in orthopedic surgery, more so than in a lot of other things. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna be like this, but like, cause all surgeons work long hours. They all work really, really hard, but neurosurgery is definitely, you know, that medical and surgical management, again, takes a lot of time. And if you're considering the specialty, you gotta be a good student. It is very competitive. It's it's usually a top five. So in the most, in like the last five years have been like dermatology, plastic surgery, kind of neck and neck, and then neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, ENT, kind of clustered together in terms of competitiveness. And it's also one of those fields that's very, very research heavy, like very research heavy. They tend to like PhDs quite a bit, and you don't need to have a PhD to get into neurosurgery, but in medical school, you will need to crank out research. And yes, I promise I am working on the research course It's just a uh, labor of love, work in progress. I want it to be very good for you guys. So make sure you're subscribed to both this channel as well as my newsletter if you want early access and discounts on that upcoming research course. That's all I wanna say about neurosurgery. If you are considering the field, good luck. It's challenging, it's it's really cool, it's very innovative. There's a lot of stuff really in the stereotactic stuff actually and functional neurosurgery, which again, So You Want To Be episode covers that. If you haven't already, check out the So You Want To Be a Neurosurgeon episode here or another episode of Why I Didn't over here. Much love and I'll see you guys there.